Oh, shit. Friday night business. You know what it is. Your boy, Big Rich. Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Friday night business. Mob Story Season 2. You already know the routine. I think they're all hating out there. Why our numbers keep growing? I don't know. Wipe your feet on the rug. Blow some smoke in the atmosphere. And salute to all my smokers that leave comments for me on what they smoking. I like somebody said sour banana. I never heard of it before, but salute. All right, let's get right down to business. This is from the button guys of the New York Mafia. If you don't know about their platform, go check it out. Great articles. The Cherry Hill Gambinos, part one. John Gambino, the Genesis. Carlos Cousins, the shadowy Sicilian connection. Quote, Mr. Kelly, I've done a lot of things in my life, and you don't need to know. Unquote. John Gambino to his Boston-based lawyer, Paul Kelly, who represented him during his extradition hearing in 2006. Carlo Gambino's family was infused with blood relatives, but none were more mysterious and shadowy than the Cherry Hill Gambinos. Headed by Carlo's cousin John Gambino, the savvy, charismatic Sicilian, had one foot in the U.S. and the other in Italy and became the monumental bridge for drug trafficking between the two countries. Don Carlo and the rest of La Cosa Nostra might have put a ban on that type of infamia, but it was a lucrative business that made billions. And John was at the top of the lucrative totem pole. Giovanni John Gambino was born on August 22, 1940 in Palermo, Sicily. He was the first in his immediate family to arrive in the U.S. and came to the country illegally in 1958. In 19 and came to the country, he was the first in his immediate family to arrive in the U.S. and came to the country illegally. In 1958, though, he was arrested as an illegal alien and deported. A short time later, he returned to the U.S. and married his cousin, also a Gambino, who was an American citizen. John himself became a U.S. citizen in 1964. John's father was Tommaso Gambino who owned the butcher shop in Italy and was a first cousin to Don Carlo. When Tommaso came to the U.S. in 1964, he settled in Brooklyn with his wife. She was a spatola. Tommaso was also a close friend and associate of Tommaso Buschera, a member of the Badalamenti family of the Sicilian Mafia, who made headlines when he turned against his family and the rest of the Sicilian Mafia in the highly publicized Pizza Connection case in the 1980s. A disgrazia! John had two brothers, Giuseppe, also known as Joe, and Rosario. He also had a sister, Giovanna, known as Joanne, who would marry Erasmo Gambino. When John first arrived in the U.S., he resided in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. In 1972, his brother's father and sister had moved to Delran, New Jersey, where the brothers set up base as the Cherry Hill Gambinos. John stayed behind in Brooklyn. Later, he lived in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and also owned a home in Milford, Pennsylvania, near John Gotti's estate. According to law enforcement, John was a man of honor in the Sicilian Mafia affiliated with the Inzarello Gambino Spatolo Di Maggio clan, a.k.a. Paso di Rigano family, and was inducted into the Gambino family in 1976 under Paul Castellano. In 1986, he was promoted to capo by John Gotti and was put in charge of the family Sicilian faction, which had previously been headed by Antonio Nino Inzarello. However, according to La Cosa Nostra Bios, Gravano testified that after Inzarello's murder in 1981, John was transferred to James Jimmy Brown Fallius crew. Later, John was transferred to Tommy Bellotti's crew and stayed there until he and Castellano were murdered in 1985. In 1983, New Jersey police identified Fallia as a capo in the North Jersey Fort Lee crew. It had also identified both John and Inzarello as capos of the South Jersey crew. No matter what crew John was in, he was still the man pulling the strings in the big business of drug trafficking. Family business. Although narcotics trafficking was John's main business, he, was also, he also owned many legitimate businesses, including construction firms and others in the U.S. and abroad. He was also in charge of the Festa di Santa Rosalia, 
on 18th Avenue in Bensonhurst. In 1966, he and Joe opened a meat market in Brooklyn called G&J Meat Market, where their father, Tommaso, also worked. The market was later renamed San Juan Meat Market. Tommaso also operated the Italian Village Restaurant in Queens. Around the same time in 1966, John opened Cafe Valentino on 18th Avenue in Bensonhurst. It's unclear if it was the same building which housed Cafe Giardino on 18th Avenue, which he later jointly owned with Joe. The original name of Cafe Giardino was Cafe Milano. Either way, Cafe Giardino became John's main base of operation and would later be the site of his law enforcement headaches in the late 1980s. At one point, the FBI called Cafe Giardino the Pentagon of the U.S. Sicilian drug trade. In 1971, he bought a cattle breeding station in the state of Barinas, Venezuela. In fact, he was listed on the board of directors for many corporations in Venezuela through his association with the Contrera brothers. In 1972, John formed Father and Sons Pizza Corp in Pennsylvania and opened three shops in Philadelphia with both his brothers and his father. Joe and Rosario would later open additional pizza joints and restaurants throughout the South, New Jersey, and Philadelphia areas. According to an El Expresso article published in 1984, John himself actually owned an estimated 240 pizzerias throughout the United States that brought in nearly $200 million a year in legitimate profits. I'll say it again. $200 million a year. Clean business. And he had many other businesses in New Jersey in partnership with his brothers and other members of his family. Towards the middle of 1975, he formed G&G &G Concrete in Brooklyn with Anthony Genovese. When legal problems started mounting in the 80s, the company moved from Brooklyn to New Jersey. Since G&G &G shared their profits with the Genovese family, it made it easier to move into the Genovese-controlled Hudson River waterfront. But the move didn't help much. U.S. District Attorney Rudy Giuliani, a disgrazia, had already started investigating the company after it revealed to be mob-controlled during the commission trial of 1986. When it moved across the river, New Jersey State Police started their own investigations. The Genovese family was being probed by New Jersey police around 1988, soon after the company had completed a 34-story condo complex at Newport in Jersey City. In an interesting side note, mob rat Frankie Frankie Fap Fapiano testified during Peter Gotti's 2004 conspiracy trial that G&G &G Concrete had made $22 million helping build the Metropolitan Detention Center in the early 1990s. G&G &G was dissolved in September of 1995, according to the New York Department of State, not long after John was sent to jail. John was also linked by DEA officials to G&G &G Tile Company, which was located on 18th Avenue in Brooklyn. It was only a few doors down from Cafe Valentino and close to his concrete business. G&G &G Tile closed in 1980 after a huge amount of heroin seized in Italy was found packaged and ready to ship to that location. Law enforcement considered the building a major center for receiving heroin shipments from Italy. This was part of the Sicilian Connection case of that time not to be confused with the more infamous Pizza Connection case of the late 1980s. John was suspected but never implicated in either case. And we mustn't forget John's involvement in the Michelle Sedonia affair of 1979, the year before things really started to unravel, or his ties to his father's good friend Tommaso Buschetta, pre-informing days, who would surprisingly come into play when the cards fell for John in the 90s. There's an old idiom that says blood is thicker than water. For Italians, it's a saying that's taken very, very seriously. But when you're a made man in the mafia, you have a new blood family that might not include those you share a bloodline with. However, for John, he had the best of both worlds. And there was no one closer to him than his two brothers, Joe and Rosario, 
who made their way to Cherry Hill. So first of all, salute to the button guys of New York Mafia. That's first of all. This was part one, the Cherry Hill Gambinos. Part two coming real soon. Everybody have a good evening. It's Friday night. Enjoy your night, right? Have fun. Make some money. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Do what you do best, but be smart about it. Salute. Thank you for listening. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share the video. And please, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's subscribe. Huh? We're making noise. We're ringing bells. Team Ruckus. Salute to the whole crew. All right? Everybody have a good evening. We will talk soon. Business.